This is TK Coleman, and you're listening to an episode of TK's Two Cents. The last place you thought to look. Let's talk about it. Tweet number one. The best ideas come from other people's criticisms of your bad ideas. There's a myth about creativity and innovation that says brilliant songs, beautiful works of art, genius, business ideas come from this state of being where people are in touch with the muse, the heavens open, the angels sing. They get a beautiful idea and they take it to the world and the world says, wow, that's the most amazing thing that we have ever seen in our lives. And so when people have ideas about things they like to do, and it doesn't seem to match that fantasy, they suppress the idea and they say, well, it's not worth acting on. This is a bad idea. This is a mediocre idea. I better wait for a brilliant one. But the secret of creativity is this. There are things you learn about ideas by engaging the world. And these are things that you cannot discover through introspection alone. It's one thing to close your eyes and fantasize, visualize. It's one thing to imagine, to make your charts and graphs, to consider the possibilities and to speculate about what will and what won't work. But it's another thing to take that idea and engage real human beings wrestling with real problems and see how they react to it. And then to take that feedback, rework your idea and present it to them again. We are often the worst judges of the quality of our ideas. And sometimes this works for good and bad. Sometimes we have an idea and we think, this is amazing. This is absolutely brilliant. Everyone's gonna love this. And you put it out there and people say, I'm bored. I don't need that. I never wanted that. I'm not asking those questions. Sorry, it's not for me. But then sometimes you have an idea and you think, ah, this isn't that good. I don't really like this. And you put it out there and someone says, that's exactly what I needed. Or better yet, someone says, that idea stinks. That idea is terrible. You need to have an element like X, Y, Z, or people won't get it at all. And then you say, oh, wow. Okay. Thanks for that feedback. I can change it. I can rework it. I can refine it. And then I can give it back to the world and it's better. We tend to think of creativity as a solo activity where the genius goes within, unearths something that's brilliant, and then gives it as a gift to the world. But creativity is really a cooperative process between the creator and the market. The creator comes up with something, gives it as a gift to the world, and the world says, ah, no, it's too sharp, it's too soft, it's too long, it's too short, it's too complicated, it's too simple, it's not funny enough, it's too silly. And then the creator takes that as a gift from the world and says, thank you very much. Let me see what I can do to rearrange it and make sure I accommodate your interests, your preferences, your needs, and so on. Let me see if I can alter the product or service, or let me see if I can change the story that I'm telling about the product or service in order to make it a better market fit. If you never get to that stage of engaging the world with your ideas, it doesn't matter how much you prepare, you're only halfway done. There are things that you learn about ideas by trying to practice those ideas. One of the best things that you can do if you have some sort of creative idea is to not look for a guarantee, not wait until you have a million dollars, but to create low risk, low cost opportunities for you to experiment with that idea in the real world so that you can get feedback from others. This is hard though, because criticism is an acquired taste and it takes a lot of time to be able to drink it down, to be able to eat it up and know that it's something that's there to nourish you, even if it feels bad at first. If you have a terrible idea, that doesn't mean you should throw it out. If you have a creative idea, something that you want to do, but you think the idea is bad, it still might be worth trying. Not because it's going to succeed, but because it's going to help you step outside of your own head and get feedback from people that don't think like you, don't have the same proclivities as you, and then that might be able to help you take that idea and make it better and better and better and better until you eventually get towards great. You get to great by constantly moving in the direction of better. And by the time you're in the realm of best, you don't even know it because you're too busy creating. Let's go to tweet number two. Sometimes the solution 
is to do a better job. Sometimes the solution is to do a different job. The nemesis of being great at anything is the need to be great at everything. Sometimes we're so afraid of people criticizing us. We're so afraid of people pointing out our failures or our mediocrities in certain areas of life that we strive to be great and beyond criticism at every possible thing. But you will never be great at the important stuff if you're not willing to be mediocre at some other stuff. No one who is great at anything is someone who is great at everything. You've got to be willing to step back and say, what are those few things I want to give my all to? Sometimes when you struggle and you fail, that's a sign that you're doing things wrong. But sometimes when you struggle or you fail, that's a sign that you're doing the wrong things. And if you always respond to every failure and every struggle by saying, I'm just gonna try harder, you're at risk of wasting valuable time and energy trying to be great at things that are best designated to other people. Maybe you're not great at it because you're not working hard enough. Maybe you're not great at it because you're not accepting feedback that you need to accept, but maybe you're not great at it because you need to be doing something else and you need to figure out what that is. Sometimes the solution is to do better. Sometimes the solution is to do different. Know the difference. All right, everybody, check it out. This is the end of the year and we're going into the holidays and I am going to take a holiday from TK's Two Cents. My goal for this show has been to help promote the revolution of one brand, help get things up and running. And we're doing a lot of cool things on social media now. If you check out the Instagram, Revolution of One Page, you check out the Twitter, Revolution of One Page, you check out the Facebook, Revolution of One Page. We've been working with some really cool influencers, having other people help us out on the video front and doing amazing things. And I'm really excited about the direction things are going in. And now it is time for TK to hit that sabbatical button on TK's Two Cents. Maybe I shouldn't use the word sabbatical because I think that might literally mean a certain period of time, like a year or whatever it may be. But it's time for me to step back and it's time for me to focus on some bigger picture things. I'm absolutely not done with podcasting, but when I make the next move, I'm gonna let you know because it's time for me to recalibrate and determine the best place for me to do work as a podcaster and a producer. I'm not done, I'm not gone. But the next time you see me, I'm going to be letting you know what's happening next for me. In the meantime, stay tuned on social media because I continue to post videos and sometimes I go live having informal conversations and things like that on Twitter and Instagram. So feel free to follow me there and tune in and we'll stay in touch that way. But in the meantime, have an awesome holiday. Continue striving to create freedom in every area of your life. And thank you all so much for tuning in to these episodes. I never take an audience for granted. So keep sharing the material, past episodes, this episodes with anybody that you think will benefit from hearing it. And thanks for being there, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Keep creating freedom. Much love.